Lego. 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 Lego said yesterday its profits increased $7.7 .7 billion. That's the sales of Lego in 2021 alone. Who would have thought that something as small as a toy brick could be worth that much? But did you know in 2003, Lego was $800 million in debt and on the verge of bankruptcy? Imagine if they did go bankrupt. Say goodbye to all the fun and the pain of stepping on one of those Lego bricks. You could step on a nail and it's less painful than stepping on a Lego in the middle of the night. Today, I'm gonna to share with you Lego's comeback story from near bankruptcy to over $7 billion in sale. But first, let's learn how it all started. Believe it or not, the Lego company didn't actually start making plastic bricks first toy they made were wooden ones like the famous wooden duck. In 1932, Ole Kirk Christensen, a Danish carpenter, created Lego out of necessity. It was the Great Depression and his carpentry work dried up. He needed to create and sell something to compensate for his lost income. So he thought, hmm, what's one thing that people wouldn't cut back spending on? It's their kids. So he started making wooden toys for them. Fun fact, Ollie called it Lego because it's a combination of the word leg and goth, two Danish words that meant play well. Now he cut out some letters and boom, Lego. So at first it was one man from Denmark selling handmade wooden toys door to door in his community. It wasn't until eight years later when Ole built a bigger factory and started selling bricks that we know today. It took off when he implemented a Lego system where they packed bricks with street signs and cars so kids can make a whole city and the rest is history. They became a well-known international brand, sold in over 130 countries with over 650 stores. In 1979, Yell Christensen, oldest grandkid, took over as the CEO of the Lego Group. So what happened? How did it get so bad? In 2000s, the physical bricks struggled with the rise of digital video games. There was more engagement and technology being packed into toys like Furby. <laughs> Remember those? Kids seem to have lost their interest in Lego. So the Lego company did three things that they thought would save the company, but it actually ended up digging themselves deeper into debt. First, they made a drastic move to create their own entertainment content. They started to release Lego team video games and even started its own production company. You know how expensive that is? Second, they made it worse by doubling down in the type of individual Lego pieces they produce. It was supposed to lead to cool new specialized sets you can assemble, it didn't actually materialize the sales. Third, they expanded their Legoland too quickly. The first Legoland opened in 1968 in Denmark, and they opened one in England, United States, and Germany in just a few years. By 2003, heavy diversification and a debt load of over $800 million meant that they were on the brink of bankruptcy. Seeing that the writing was on the wall, Yelp stepped down and tapped a former McKinsey consultant, Jorgen Knopstorp, to take over as CEO. Now, Jorgen moved quickly to save the company. Here are five things he fixed in marketing, product, and operations to save Lego and help it thrive to over $7.7 .7 billion in revenue by 2021. First, focus, focus, focus. Jorgen returned to basics and implemented aggressive cost-cutting measures and shed underperforming businesses. He immediately halved the number of Lego pieces produced and cut a thousand jobs. Jorgen also sold up the company's four Legoland theme parks for nearly $460 million, and they put their computer software business on hold. The lesson here for marketers, it's easy to get caught up with the latest trends. TikTok, video, AI, PLG, and blockchain, it's often wiser to double down on what's working before pursuing a new channel. Second, partner with well-known brands. When Lego tried his hand at content creation the second time, instead of going all in alone, they leaned on a partner with vast experience in the entertainment world. Lucas Phillips. He created an animated series that aired on the Cartoon Network, Star Wars, Revenge of the Brick. Get it? He did so well, they created a Lego Star Wars video game together based on the Star Wars prequel trilogy film. It became one of the best selling games they created so far. Big lesson for collaboration success is that Star Wars and Lego have one thing in common, die hard fan bases. Lego repeated the success by partnering with other brands with diehard fans like Marvel, Harry Potter, Indiana Jones. The marketing lesson here is to look for ways to partner with companies that have complementary audience to your product. Doing so will help you reduce the burden and investment on your team to create, produce, and promote new content. Number three, create products for the adult fans of Lego. Jorgen saw the potential of marketing to a group of fans who grew up loving and playing with Lego. He 
call themselves adult fans of LEGO or eFall for short, and the largest growth for the company in the recent years has been adult consumers. So LEGO started creating products geared towards its eFalls, which are more expensive than the regular LEGO set. For example, they sold a Star Wars Millennium Falcon with over 7,000 piece for over $800. Adults have become a coveted market for toy makers, confronting increased competition and waning sales growth. So LEGO saw eFall so important to its success that they acquired BrickLink, biggest online community of AFOLs. The lesson for marketers here, deeply understanding diehard fans of your product can help you identify opportunities for new products and marketing campaigns. Number four, crowdsource designs from LEGO's creator community. The previous leadership team at LEGO resisted at the idea of harnessing the power of content creators. LEGO had their own internal designers. Why would they need these creators? Jurgen saw this as an opportunity. In 2008, LEGO launched a crowdsourcing platform in Japan. LEGO fans can submit their designs on the website and others can vote their favorite designs. Winning submissions become official LEGO products that anyone can buy and the winner gets 1% of the sales of that product. It worked out so well that they expanded globally in 2011 and now it's called LEGO Ideas and it still exists. Marketing lesson here is if you have super fans of your product, look for ways to partner with them to create original user-generated content and even new products. Number five, build a story-driven product line. The LEGO design and innovation team realized that kids needed a narrative to latch on to, an ongoing story in which they could immerse themselves. Christian Favre, a marketer who worked for LEGO under a third-party company, had an idea for a new story that fits into a new product line. So he got together a team of writers, designers, and marketers at LEGO to create the fantasy universe of Bionicle, where good and evil forces fought for mask of power on a tropical island. Every character and element of the story is collectible and purchasable in the real world. The strategy worked. Sales of Bionicle sets became one of LEGO's most successful products, shipping over 190 million toys and grossing over $160 million in sales in 2003. It made up 25% of LEGO's revenue in 2003, but 100% of its profit. One could say Bionicle saved LEGO from bankruptcy. Marketing lesson here is that people buy into stories much more than products. The best way to retain interest and build brand loyalty is engage your customers and buy into a narrative. Jorgen Vignodstor often gets credit for saving LEGO. After taking over LEGO as CEO in 2004, he quadrupled LEGO sales to grow analog roots in a digital world by turning back to what made it great in the first place. The simple LEGO brick. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about LEGO. Did you used to play it as a kid? Did you know that they were about to go bankrupt? Do you think they're still on the right track? Which ones are your favorite sets? from LEGO. Again, let me know in the comments. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I actually sent out a weekly newsletter that shares secret strategy or a technique that world-class marketers use to hit the KPIs consistently and wow their colleagues. You can go to marketingpowerups.com to subscribe now. Make sure to also like and subscribe to the Marketing Powerups channel. That's all for now. This is Ramli John from Marketing Powerups. Bye.